Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. In other words, an equation with integer solutions. We have n squared plus 1 divided by n plus 1, and that is equal to k. n and k are both integers. I'll be presenting two methods, and if you can come up with a third one, please let us know in the comment section down below. So for my first method, I'm going to do probably what is not that typical. I'm going to cross multiply. That's going to give us n squared plus 1 equals kn plus k. And then I want to put everything on the same side, n squared, and I want to bring over the kn, and then plus 1 minus k equals 0. Now, I did write this this way because I kind of want to write it as a special type of equation, which I'm going to make clear in a little bit. So my idea here is to basically write this as a quadratic. Now I want that to be quadratic in n, right? This is a quadratic equation in n. Obviously in k it's not, it's linear. And I want to solve for it. The idea behind this and pretty much uh, a lot of different Diophantine equations where you can kind of use the quadratic formula or you can turn the equation into a quadratic one uh, the advantage is that you can kind of control uh, how you know how to make the number an integer in other words the quadratic formula contains a radical and we can go off of that okay let me clarify what I mean so let's write the formula or the solutions using the quadratic formula since it's quadratic in n the coefficient of n would be negative k and this will be constant make sense so n equals negative b, which is k, plus minus the square root of b squared, which is k squared, minus 4ac. a is 1, so I'm just going to multiply by c, and all of that is divided by 2. Awesome. Now, we need to simplify the expression inside the radical. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to get k squared minus 4 plus 4k. I want to write the 4k first, and then minus 4. And then divide everything by 2. Awesome. Now we're going to go ahead and focus on the discriminant, what is inside the radical, right? That expression, in order for n to be an integer, k must be added to another integer. Of course, that has to be, uh, you know, the sum needs to be even as well because we're going to divide by 2, but that's a different story. First of all, what you're adding to k needs to be an integer. So the square root of something is an integer, which means the stuff inside the radical needs to be a perfect square and this is actually a really perfect way to approach it now if I told you that okay if this needs to be a perfect square then I can kind of set it equal to m squared where m is an integer and remember k and n are also integers we I said that at the beginning right I know the thumbnail didn't specify it but the title did and hopefully you got that here too now what am I supposed to do in these cases? I kind of have quadratic expressions on both sides, and I need to turn this into a difference of two squares. In other words, the left-hand side needs to be turned into a perfect square and plus minus something. Hopefully, that's going to be a plus, because I want that to stay there by itself. But anyways, to keep a long story short, I'm going to go ahead and complete the square on the left-hand side. So consider the following, k squared plus 4k plus 4 is a perfect square, and then I can just subtract 8 from it to balance my equation, right? Because I have a negative 4. Cool. Now this becomes k plus 2 to the second power minus 8 equals m squared. And now we can go ahead and put our expressions together and set it equal to 8, right? Here we go. Awesome. Now we have a difference of two squares, and we can go ahead and factor it, k plus 2 plus m and then k plus 2 minus m equals 8. This is the most critical part because obviously you want to turn this into a factorable equation, right? From the quadratic to something like this. Now, there's only so many factors of 8, right? So we're going to go ahead and consider all the cases. So let's say this can be 8 and this can be 1. And notice that when that's the case, let's go ahead and evaluate it because from here we can easily find other cases. So if this is 8 and the second equation is equal to 1, we're going to go ahead and add these up, and we're going to run into a problem. You know what that is? These two are going to cancel out. We're going to get 2k plus 4 equals 9 
2k equals 5. In conclusion, right? We don't get an integer solution. k and m are both integers. So what does that mean? When the sum of these two numbers is odd, we're not getting a solution. So we have to make sure, and that basically includes the negative 8, negative 1, negative 1, negative, all those cases with 1 and 8, absolute value-wise, okay? So we have to look at other things, like 4 and 2, right? And 2 and 4, of course, they're just going to switch around, but you can only do so many, right? So that basically, negative 4, negative 2, and negative 2, negative 4. Those are the only cases I think that work. Correct me if I'm wrong. Let's go ahead and find out. Now, the second one works, so let's go ahead and go off of that. For example, if k plus 2 plus m equals 4 and k plus 2 minus m equals 2, from here, we can basically add these equations up. That's going to give us 2k plus 4 equals 6. And then we can kind of, you know, factor out a 2. I don't know if you want to do it that way, but k plus 2 equals 3. And from here, we get k equals 1. And then when k is equal to 1, m is going to be 1 as well. And that doesn't mean the solutions are 1, 1, because remember, we're looking for something else, right? What are we looking for? n and k. So m is not that important, but we still need it, and we need to find n. So how do you find n when this is a perfect square? That's another question, right? Remember the expression under the radical is m squared, so we can write n as k plus minus the square root of m squared divided by 2, and that basically means k plus minus m divided by 2. Make sense? Great. So, in other words, since I'm going to find n from here, and n is the, the sum of k and m divided by 2, or their difference divided by 2, I kind of try to focus on this. Look, we have the sum, we have the difference, right? So, if you just ignore m, of course. I mean, if you ignore the 2, of course, right? So, that sum added to, anyways, you get the idea, hopefully. You can basically evaluate all the values from here. I'm not going to go through everything, because I still need to show you the second method, and I'm going to show you all the solutions at the end, okay? So, Here's our second method, which is probably the method you should prefer if possible, when possible. And there's my more questions that use this idea, but obviously much more complicated. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use polynomial division or manipulation. n squared is not divisible by n plus 1, but n squared minus 1 is. So I'm going to subtract 1 and then add 2. And now I can go ahead and break this down. Here's the idea. This is going to give us a linear expression, which is n minus 1 from difference of two squares. And then we're going to get 2 plus 2 over n plus 1 equals k. This is really nice and obviously much easier because notice that in order for this to be an integer, we have to make sure that n plus 1 divides 2. In other words, n plus 1 can be 1, 2, negative 1, or negative 2. Make sense? So that gives you the following values. n can be 0, n can be 1, n can be negative 2, or n can be negative 3. Of course, when n takes those values, you can go ahead and plug them in here, and here, or here, whatever. You can find the k values that correspond. And this brings us <laughs> the quadratic formula, right? That's the formula we went through. This brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.